We're live. Should I start? Give us one second, Chair. Wait for okay. the sergeants, please. Okay. Sergeants, we begin the recording. PC recording is underway. Crowd is up. Backup is rolling. Sergeant Leonardo, you may begin to open. Good morning, and welcome to the New York City Remote Council hearing for the Committee on Transportation. At this time, we ask that council staff turn on their video for verification purposes. Please place cell phones and electronic devices to silent or vibrate to minimize disruptions. Mr. Chair, we are ready to begin. Thank you, Rafael and the whole team of sergeants and everyone behind the computers and the technology that works so hard to be sure that not only the members, but the whole public in New York City are able to follow this hearing and all the hearing at the city council. Good morning. Thank you for joining the Committee on Transportation hearing to vote on proposed intro number 1933-A, a bill sponsored by my colleague, council member Kalina Rivera that would amend the administrative code of the city of New York in relation to open street program. One of the things that the COVID-19 pandemic has shown us is that we really need to think about how our city streets are des designed and utilized in order to increase safety and maximize open space. As I have often stated before, we must continue to explore innovative ways to make sure our streets work for all people and move towards becoming the most pedestrian and cycling friendly city in the country. Unfortunately, I couldn't hold my car free day this year or last year, but we've been closing the street from Times Square to Union Square. My dream is that one day we close Broadway from Yonker all the way downtown in a car free day, and that it become the normal thing that we should do, dedicating more space from the, from the street to pedestrians and cyclists. The open street program is not only innovative and groundbreaking, but I believe that it also play a role in improving our physical and mental health during the pandemic. That's very important, especially in underserved community, that most of them were dealing with asthma, obesity before COVID. And because of those goals, most of them, most of the number of individuals who died in New York City, they were our black, Asian, Latino, or poor white who didn't have the resources as a wealthy one. The program has given New Yorkers additional space to safely enjoy the outdoors in the midst of one of the worst pandemics we have ever faced. We must continue to do everything in our power to improve the open street program and expand it across our city, especially in communities of colors that historically have not received adequate investments in park and open space. And this cannot be a rhetoric. A rhetoric. This has to be a strong commitment. That's what we need my colleague, white progressive, who live in the wealth in the middle class community, to be our partner, to really bring the resources that we need to continue expanding open space, especially in underserved community. Proposed intro number 1933-A seeks to build on what we have started We open street and make it better. The bill will require DOT to operate a permanent open street program with a street managed by DOT or community organizations. It will also require the city to provide a staff on resources uh, to at least 20 open streets in area where community groups want to want open streets but lack capacity to run them and will require DOT to survey community partners and evaluate open street and on an annual basis to determine whether to apply further permanent design changes such as convert conversion to a shared street or pedestrian plaza. In the past, we had commitment from Times Square Plaza, from Disney and all those big players around 42nd Street that they were ready to adopt all the plaza or the area in the underserved community. This is the time to expand those partnerships to our underserved community in the city of New York. I'm very proud to be a co-sponsor of this important bill and happy that we are voting it out or committed today. 
Council Member uh, Rivera is here. I will now turn it over to her as a bill's prime sponsor. Council Member Kalina Rivera, it's your turn now. Thank you so much, uh, Chair Rodriguez, uh, for permitting me to speak uh, briefly on my bill, Intro 1933A, and for all of your leadership on all issues, transportation and open space. I have learned so much from you, Vidanis, and, and um, I'm just so proud to call you a colleague. I want to encourage all my colleagues on this committee to vote yes on this very sensible legislation that provides more flexibility for open streets going forward and ensures that there will be effective community outreach and buy-in from all stakeholders in these neighborhoods. I think we can all acknowledge the important role that open streets played at the height of the pandemic. When we were desperate for more space for socially distanced recreation and rest, both mentally and physically. Today though, it's clear that some important changes we need to make to the program. And we have the legislation to do just that. Some of the changes very briefly, ensuring open streets have real city staffing and resources by ensuring open streets can be more flexible in the actual way they use the road, by ensuring that DOT prioritizes its resources in under-resourced neighborhoods with community applicant mentorship and real outreach efforts so that communities actually have a stake in which streets are a appropriate to open in their neighborhoods. And this legislation also is an important priority for Speaker Johnson and it will require the Department of Transportation who we plan to hold accountable and to make sure listens to us. It requires that DOT annually evaluate and select open streets for permanent upgrades that could range from conversions into a shared street or pedestrian plaza to bollards to even a raised street grade, which would enable that to be flushed with the sidewalk. So these conversations um, are totally ongoing. We want it to be community led. And these conversions would satisfy benchmarks established in Speaker Johnson's Streets Master Plan. And that allows for a more effective community led transition to a truly pedestrian friendly city. So open streets have given us the chance to rethink what is possible for our streets. And we've been able to do so in record time. We can't lose this momentum, particularly when we have the opportunity to do so with the program that is led first and foremost by our communities. We need to pass this bill today. I thank you all for your consideration of this legislation and I do hope to have your support today. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Kalina. And it is also my honor to be working with you and have you all my friend. We know that we stand here not only with a title council member, but as grassroots organizers, people that like you and I, and I know that Carlos and others who stand in the shoulders of so many men and women that in the Black and Latino community, especially, they die, they fought, they, they dedicate their life. And the least, the least thing that we can do is to continue our fight and our work to make New York City better and a place of equal opportunity to the children of the third community and those children who live in area or the wealthy uh, sea quarter in the city. And I want to, before calling on the board, I also want to thank Major de Blasio. Uh, it is more easy. It's not easy to be a major, especially when you are not someone that comes from a wealthy family, a working class or middle class major who go to City Hall and have to be dealing with so many challenges, so many interests to focus on the negative piece. But I gotta say also that I gotta give a lot of credit and thanks to Major de Blasio and the whole thing. Uh, Emma Wall, Paul Ochoa, Jeremy, and everyone that is working the other side uh, to, for being working with Speaker Corey Johnson, uh, Jason Goldman, and anyone that made this big project possible. And, and I got to also, I will be inviting my colleague, especially Kalina and the rest of, of the members of this committee for the moment when I'm going to be inviting a Speaker Corey Johnson, Brooklyn Board President Eric Adams the administration to come as we will be doing the ribbon cutting of the permanent plaza that was already approved two weeks ago, Kiskeya Plaza in Dagman between Broadway and Seaman. That is started as an open streets restaurant and thanks God and the support of Major de Blasio, Speaker Corey Johnson, he already being approved as a permanent plaza 
in Washington High, one of the sick code 100034 that most people die in Manhattan because of COVID and anyone can die, but most people who die, they were dealing with respiratory issue, with asthma and obesity. And this is how we show our responsibility for the present and future generation. I also want to encourage the administration to work with the borough presidents. They are leaders, they've been here. As we move in this, in this proposal, we need to work with the community board, but especially the borough president of Manhattan, Gebroy, borough president, Provencito Ruben Diaz Sr. in the Bronx that represent those zip code where most people also die. The great and my own Brooklyn Board President, Eric Adam. I want to be sure again that City Hall will be working with all those leaders that are gonna be expanding this great proposal led by, again, a, our friend and colleague, Council Member Rivera. I would now ask, and before that, in Español, muchas gracias a Kalina Rivera, una líder nuestra aquí en la ciudad de Nueva York, al alcalde Bill de Blasio, al speaker Cory Johnson, a los líderes de la ciudad, como son los presidentes condado de Manhattan, Gerd Brewer, Rubén Díaz Sr., de también en, en, en el Bronx, como también tenemos a Donovan Richard en Queens, como tenemos a Aldo en, Aldo en, en Staten Island, y que también tenemos a quien para mí es un gran líder en este momento y en el futuro, en nuestro líder, el presidente del condado de Brooklyn, Eric Ares. Hoy estamos votando un proyecto de ley que va a expandir los programas de la calle, va a expandir la plaza, le va a dar más espacio para que todos los neoyorquinos, especialmente los más pobres, la clase trabajadora que es la que paga más impuestos y ve menos dinero reinvirtiéndose en esos lugares, que tenga más espacio para que ellos puedan caminar, tener programas de arte, de cultura y también saber que las calles son de todos, no es solamente de lo que tenemos caro. Eh, with that, let me now eh, eh, give me one second, if you don't mind. Eh, I will now ask the committee clerk to conduct a local vote on the proposed bill and recommend, and I strongly recommend that my colleague vote yes on this important piece of legislation. Morning, William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote committee on transportation, proposed introduction 1933A, Chair Rodriguez. Dedicated to the members of transportation alternative, family for safe streets, I vote aye. Thank you, Cabrera. Uh, Ku. Mr. Chair, can I explain my vote? Of course. Uh, thank you. I support the Open Streets program. I think we need to give New Yorkers every possible advantage against the coronavirus. We need to maximize every inch of square footage available to us. And we should continue to be vigilant against the virus. When coronavirus shut down the city, the open streets program made perfect sense. It turned our streets into fun jobs and offer a rare reprieve from isolation in urban areas. It turned areas that were off limits into spaces where all are welcome. There's no reason why this should not continue now that we are in recovery. So I support the bill, but I must impress that not every street is suitable for this purpose. The city needs to remain cognizant of competing interests, and especially of traffic congestion, sanitation, noise, and fire hazards. Uh, rerouting traffic on tight street, uh, rerouting traffic on tight uh, city streets can also do more harm than good for local businesses. So I urge the DOT to carefully listen the concerns of the communities where open streets are planned. We need to monitor, analyze, and troubleshoot what works and what doesn't, so that open streets don't become detrimental to those who are mostly affected by them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Levin. But I know. Menchaka. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granting. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Councilmember Rivera, and the rest of the committee that's voting in support of, of this really amazing uh, community effort 
and you know just thinking about my district in the last year and how the community really came together and made it happen uh and this is just maybe why and i and uh carlina and i were texting last night and i'm feeling more serious about it i think we should call this not open streets because they're actually open right now for cars uh, these are community streets and it makes it more clear about what we're trying to do and we're, we're removing uh these you know two ton weapons uh, that have been doing a lot of kind of negative things for our communities and really opening up that that street way for community engagement. And uh, in a time of COVID, but also in a time of climate change as we're all trying to figure out how to use space differently and bring in our small businesses, uh, I think community streets would be great. So I don't know if that's an LS request we have to put in and make it, make it happen, but um, I, I really want to push the council and the, and the mayor and everyone to start using a different language that really shows exactly what we're doing here. Uh, but with all that, I vote aye. Thank you, Carolina. Miller. No. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you, Idanis. And I think I'm going to try my best to join you at Quisqueya Plaza. I think it's a, a great thing. It's also um, very important to the Latino and the Dominican community to continue to see um, these streets named after communities that have built the city of New York. So thank you for the work you're doing. I want to thank you for your efforts in organizing it and making it possible. For a lot of those businesses out there, too, this is going to be life changing. So again, just want to thank you for the work that you're doing related to that plaza. Um, I just want to be also say that Kalina Rivera doing the um, open streets, um, the fact that I did the outdoor dining, just recognizing the work that's being done by minority members to really expand these open space opportunities. Um, and that a lot of people think that these, these endeavors or initiatives are mostly done by uh, you know, white elected officials, and they're not. We have a public plaza in, in Manhattan that's going to uh, move forward with Chair Rodriguez. Again, the open streets being permanent and the work that we did to make the outdoor dining permanent. When we talk about taking back our streets, we just have um, uh, a very diverse group of people pushing these things forward. I want to just acknowledge the work that's being done by uh, our colleagues. Uh, and congratulations to Council Member Carlino Rivera very excited that we're making this permanent. Um, looking forward to making sure that it's done the right way. Um, and with the resources that are going to be available to us, I feel like that's going to happen. So I will proudly vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Ruben Diaz. Aye. Thank you. Hold in. Councilmember Holden. Aye. Brooks Powers. Um, I'd like permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank you. Um, first, I'd like to say thank you to Councilmember Rivera for your leadership um, around this uh, important bill. For me, I represent a, a very diverse district, one that has the pleasure of enjoying a boardwalk um, for most of the year and another part of my district, which is more inland. And so having opportunities where community have more access to space is always something that um, I am supportive of, the members of my community are supportive of. I would like to just echo that I have shared um, publicly in terms of wanting to ensure that the Department of Transportation works closely with communities that they would look and seek to have open streets um, come to. That is extremely important. We don't find that um, dynamic often enough in communities of color. Oftentimes we see um, the, the projects come to our community and no real uh, effort being put in, um, in part by that agency in a real way. And so 
Um, I would love to see more open streets in the parts of my district that make sense where the community would like to see it, but I would also like to work and strengthen the relationship and the communication with the Department of Transportation, and I can't really underscore that enough, but I will vote aye on this. So thank you again, Councilmember Rivera. Thank you. By a vote of nine in the affirmative, one in the negative and no abstentions, uh, proposed introduction 1933A has been adopted by the committee. And Mr. Chair, I believe we are waiting for one more member. Okay, and I will leave the vote open, but uh, before uh, 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 you know, we uh, let the other council member who voted to go, most of them have done it already. I also would like to thank the great uh, chief of staff that we have at the council, Jason Goldman, Speaker Corey Johnson, and, and the team, again, that work on, on this bill, especially the, the, the team has been leading this from Jeff Baker and also Kelly Taylor, and also from our committee of transportation, Elio, Rick, and the rest of the team, and my chief of staff, Elizabeth Conforme, Tomas Garita, and Evelyn Collado, so everyone who did a part in this bill, thank you. And it's been a great honor to be working with Kalina Rivera, not only with this bill, but in many other bills related to transportation or other uh, bills important for the whole city of New York. I don't want to take space from any sector of this community. And I, I just want to be sure that all area in the underserved community get the same investment, the same attention, that the upper middle class and the upper class get in the city of New York. Thank you. Will Will you close the 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 hearing then? We can close with you, Mr. Jack. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
Good afternoon. Final vote committee on transportation on proposed introduction 1933A is nine in the affirmative, one in the negative, and no abstentions. 